So you're a streamer or a content creator, but you don't want to spend a lot of money on your first video editing and streaming rig. Well, you've come to the right place. We're going to spend around $1,500 for your banger PC, which will do all the video editing and content creation. We'll be going for a modern platform, 32 gigabytes of system memory, an RTX graphics card, tons of very fast storage. And for this $15 bill, we're going to follow the same criteria with our previous builds. So all parts must be brand new. There are no used parts in this build and all parts are available in Amazon at the time of recording. For our processor, we want more cores because more cores will be useful when we are video editing and multitasking. And what we pick in here is the Core i5-13 500 it comes with 14 cores, 6 performance cores, and 8 efficient cores, totaling to 20 threads. It's very good for multitasking. The core class goes up to 4.8 gigahertz. I mean, it's not as high as the K models, but it's still decent. More importantly, this comes with Intel's integrated graphics on a processor, or you know, we could utilize QuickSync, which really helps with video editing. And this processor only comes down to 240. $47. So this is not a bad price for a 14 core processor. Now this processor only comes with 65 watts TDP. But because we're doing a lot of video editing, we're going to be pushing those CPU clocks and therefore would need proper cooling. And so we'll be going for an aftermarket solution in here to cool this processor. So what we pick is the Thermalright Peerless Assassin 120 SE. It's a pretty good tower cooler. It has good reviews, six heat pipes, comes with that neutral black color. It's easy to install, it's reliable, and easy to maintain because it's a tower cooler. For $43, there's no need to think about this one, boys. Just add this one to the cart. And for a motherboard, we're going to pick a modern motherboard with that Z790 chipset. And what we're going for is the Gigabyte Z790D DDR4 motherboard. It's a pretty decent board. It's obviously a budget Z790 board, but we picked this Z790 motherboard because it has access to multiple PCI Express lanes. So PCIe lanes is very important for a drive setup. So if you're a video editor, you want those as much lanes as you can. On top of that, we have a 16 plus 1 plus 1 power phase VRM at 60 amps. This is pretty decent and this will ensure that this board will be able to handle any processor if you upgrade later on. It has good heat sinks on the VRM which will maintain those thermals. Heat sinks are also found on the main NVMe. We've got four RAM slots in here, DDR4 of course, three PCIe 4.0 NVMe slots. This is good when we will use all these lanes later down the track and we've got a PCIe GPU slot here which is 5.0 at 16 lines. It features a multi-key which you can use for multiple things like a reset BIOS, RGB switch and you can set this one up in the BIOS. It also comes with a Q flash button in case you want to flash your BIOS with a without any CPU. I mean, you wouldn't need to worry about it in the setup because we've got a CPU, but I suppose it's nice to have. And it comes with that good neutral color. It's only for $189. So this is quite a good price for a Z790 board boys. For our memory, we have picked a DDR4 kit. Yes, I know what you're going to say. Why? Well, because we wanted stability in our rig and I'm assuming you are using this PC to play games. So we will be running our RAM on XMP profiles and DDR4 will give you that stability when video editing even when you have XMP enabled because DDR4 is a really mature generation really unlike DDR5. So the last thing you need is when you're in the middle of your edit your rig crashes because you know instability of the DDR5 running on XMP. So we'd probably be better off running a DDR4 kit on XMP profiles. And what we pick in here is the Patriot Viper Steel 3600 MHz 32GB kit. It's a pretty good kit. Most of these kits will come with a solid Samsung B die memory. So if you want, which is good if you want to play with timings. I mean, it defaults to 1822 2242. It's only $69. That's cheap for 32GB boys. Just so yeah, this one's pretty good. Let's talk about storage. And for an editing rig, storage setup is really important. And for this, we'll need two drives here, one silicon power, one terabyte. This will be our 
OS and programs drive for $44 and we'll also need another one same thing but 4 terabytes and this will be our cache and gaming slash storage drive for $188 now with this 4 terabyte drive it is important not to fill this up because we want this to be functioning at optimum levels on your video editing programs you need to point the cache settings towards this drive later down the track you can probably add another 4 terabyte drive could be hard drive or SSD to offload your content as cold storage anyway these drives are pretty good they come with pretty good speeds here about 5,000 and they've got a good price so yeah we'll just take these drives into the car before we carry on, if you guys watching this video is interested in building a PC over the next few months, we do these build guides on different price points every month. So hit that subscribe button if you'd want to be up to speed with the best value PC specs. We do all the research for you so you wouldn't need to spend more time researching or googling. Anyway, let's go back to for our graphics card, we're going to be picking this one, the Gigabyte RTX 4070 WinForce OC 12 Gigabyte card. It's not the fastest card in the block, but it will get the job done. It comes with three fans, factory overclock, only has 192 bit bus, but should be decent enough for modern gaming. Now it has access to Nvidia features like DLSS or DLSS 3 aka frame generation if you want to boost those frames on any game that you're playing. And it's only priced at $599.99 which is its MSRP and that's a good thing. Now besides the price, the most important thing why we picked this card is because it comes with AV1 encoding. Now AV1 encoding is the latest format which is very efficient and produces high quality image or video so if you're uploading videos in youtube you can choose to encode your videos in av1 format and this will give it better quality also if you're streaming you can use the av1 encoder which will also give you better quality stream and this is much better than the old infant encoder now the only downside is that streaming using av1 is not yet available on platforms like twitch but it works for YouTube. So if you're streaming on YouTube, I would definitely use the AV1 encoder. It will give you that, you know, those bigger advantages. And as mentioned, performance for the 4070 is still decent. Obviously, it's not as good as the 4080 or the 4090 cards, but it's good enough for everyday gaming. It comes with 12 gigabyte of RAM, which should give you that headroom on your video editing. So yes. The good thing we like about the RTX 4070 is that it's a pretty efficient card so it doesn't require a really chunky power supply unlike its bigger brothers so about 600 watts should be fine but in this instance we've decided to go for a bit higher wattage in case you want to upgrade later on and what to pick is a Sega Tip 750 watts power supply it comes with 80 plus gold efficiency fully modular and this thing is currently priced at $89 which is actually not a bad price so yes and for the case we pick something it has good ventilation as you'll be spending a lot of time editing which means you'll be pushing all those cores of your cpu in doing so and unlike gaming which utilizes some cores video editing usually uses a lot of those cores especially when you're exporting the video so what we picked here is the lian lee 215 e80x case it's a pretty neat case comes with a mesh front and look at that it even comes with two 200 millimeters argb fans in the front it has good airflow decent space comes with an integrated fan hub so it's easier to configure no more buying an, a hub it also has space for two hard drives or ssd at the bottom so if you need to expand your storage later on and it has a maximum of 370 millimeters length for your graphics card clearance so in comparison an rtx 4090 rog strix card is about 457 millimeters so that card will fit just fine in this case right and this case is currently priced at 98 bucks but it brings totally good value so that's why we picked this case for you overall we have a pretty decent content creator pc right here we've got the 13th generation core i5 the thermal right air tower cooler the z790 motherboard at 32 gigabytes ram two nvme drives rtx 4070 the 750 watts power supply 
80 plus gold, a Lian Lee case, and this totals to $1,571.79. Now, it's a pretty good deal. If you want to cut down on this, what we would suggest is for you to look around your local used market for any good deals on an RTX 3080 or 3090 cards. I mean, those cards are decent, but you wouldn't have the AV1 encoder. So yeah, obviously with it being used, it doesn't come with any warranty. So that's the trade-off right there. But if you're interested in the 3080 performance, we have done a video on our second channel with the 3080. So check that one out and we'll see you guys over there.